be making basics. What's going on YouTube? Be making basics back again with another dope video. If you're new to my channel, please do me a favor. Go ahead and subscribe as well as give me a thumbs up because we're coming back to back with bangers. In today's video, I want to go over my mixing process start to finish. I'm going to be showing you step by step what I do to mix my beats. Now, I have some older beats that I have and I'm actually about to revamp them and put them back out. So I already have the audio files for the beats, but that's going to really be the st first step is to go ahead and export your session as audio files. If you need help with exporting your session as audio files, I do have other videos, but that's going to be the first step. So let me go ahead and click on audio here and we're going to import those files. So we have that there. I'm going to come over here to my finder and I already have some tracks here. Um, so I'm going to bring those on in and let me pull that over here and bring it in like that. Now, the second thing I'm going to do here is go ahead and use existing tracks and I'm going to let it come in here. You're going to see this Eva J tag here. I used to go solely as Eva J. It's still my nickname, but um, now as far as for production, I go by Ukiah Beats. So I'm going to delete that tag and we'll put my Ukiah Beats tag in here. Um, second thing I want to go ahead and do is just check and see what the BPM is. And I think I actually can see it right here. It's 123. So that's very important to change the uh, session to the actual BPM. All right. After we get the uh, files, um, you know, imported into a new session here, the second thing that I want to do is go ahead and save. So I'll just go ahead and push Command S and we'll just name this uh, the name of the beat. And then I'll just put like mix after it. All right. So we'll let it go ahead and start copying all these audio files. Basically, I had this uh, beat on my hard drive and I'm, you know, getting all of my beats off my hard drive and put them all on YouTube and different places. So that's this whole process here. We're going to let it do its thing. Um, while it's doing its thing, I do like to go ahead and organize my beats. So, um, and when I say organize it or organize my tracks here, I might like to put my drums at the top and then I put my uh, melody at the bottom. So we got our 808s kick, you know, we got these snares. Let's do the snare roll. Uh, we got another snare right here um, that comes in. It looks like building this beat up here. Um, I got this, yeah, right here. So. These are different elements of my beat. I'm going to go ahead and just take this end marker and move it back to the end. And what I'll do too is I can actually come over here and rename these tracks just to make it simpler. I'll put it 808A, 808B, we'll do kick A. I'm just going to keep on going down a list here and doing that, just getting everything organized so that. I can easily see what I'm working with. All right, slight process to it, but um, I think it's gonna, it definitely helps at least with my process when it comes to mixing my beats. So we'll do a snare roll. All right, we got our hat. We got this yeah sound, yeah, uh, we'll just say effect. And I'll just say, um, loop one or a and we'll just say loop b and i'm actually going to get rid of this y slow down hook right here um right there like that so after i get everything organized here i'm going to push uh command a to highlight everything then push shift option and the letter n as nancy and that's going to pretty much take everything i named right here and put it over here and name it in the workspace window. Now, after I do that, what I do is go ahead and put a uh, loop over my music like this, just over like the hook or the main part of the beat that has the main melodies and everything. I'm gonna go ahead and go to the mixer window. You can click there or you can push the letter X on your keyboard. And I'm just gonna go ahead and turn everything down. So turn everything all the way down like that. And um, from here, I'm gonna go ahead and start working on getting the, the proper levels. So I'm gonna push up some of these kicks and everything like that. Now, since these kicks are probably the same type of kick, uh, or excuse me, those 808s are different 808s or whatever. So I, 
I can pretty much pull up this, the, the kicks and the 808s at the same time since we got two different kicks here. But anyway, I'm just going to start with a kick, pull that up, and I don't want it to really hit too much above negative 6 dB. The max I want it to hit is like negative 3 dB. So that's fine. We got that. Let's keep on rolling down the the the, the, the uh, keep, keep on going. So I'm gonna push the the snare. Let's bring that up. And so what I also do when I'm mixing this is a tip. I usually like to work on getting the levels and, and things of that nature first um, at very low level, uh, level of volume. So I'll come over to my um, digital audio interface and I'll turn it down almost to a point where you can't hear it and then start turning up just a little bit so it's very, very low. And it allows me to make sure that I'm not having like the hi-hats too loud or a snare too loud by listening to it at a lower level. So I'm going to go ahead and start working on the hi-hats now. And you just want those hi-hats just loud enough where you can hear them, but not too loud where it's like overrunning the mix. That's one thing I noticed like on a lot of mixes, sometimes those hi-hats are way too loud. So you want to make sure that those are loud enough where you can hear them, but not too loud. Let's keep it going. Now let's go ahead and bring in this loop. So we got that loop going. Now I'm gonna go ahead and bring in this 808. Let's go ahead and pull that bad boy up. All right, bet. So that's actually pretty solid. Now I'm gonna take this uh, this loop here and I'm gonna place it somewhere else in the mix so I can get the rest of these different instrument sounds. So like I have this 808B is more than likely gonna probably be right at the same level as this 808. So I'm just gonna go ahead and instantly pull him up like that. Same thing with this B kick. Um, it looks like it's like a, kind of like a, an accent kick. So I wanna turn him up, but like have him lower than this A kick. Uh, with the snare, I'm not sure why I kind of brought that other snare in here, but I'm gonna go ahead and turn him up some as well. And again, same thing with this like this kick. I think this other snare is kind of like a snare that would go like tuck it under it and whatever. Um, let's go ahead and also just take a brief listen and make sure everything is good. So we got that. I'm going to move this bad boy back over here so I can get the level on this other loop. cool so we got our levels pretty much here i know i have this uh audio part here let me just bring that on uh, in here so actually i'm gonna take that on out of there i'm gonna delete that sometimes you'll find in the mixes like you don't need certain things, you just delete it out. You know what I mean? So I'm gonna go ahead and save this, Command S. And now what I'm gonna do is we're gonna group some of these tracks together. So like my drums, I'll take this and highlight it, come over here to my output, and then go where you see bus. And we're gonna you know, create a uh, another aux track. And we're gonna be sending all the signal of the drums to this aux track. So I'm gonna name this drums. 
and we're gonna do the same thing with these loops um, and this effects okay so it's basically gonna be our melody we'll come over here and do that same thing and then this is just basically so I can control the melody and the uh, drums without having to go to each individual track to move the volume levels up or down so because I still want to create a little headroom because I'm gonna you know throw a mastering plugin on this after this is all said and done so let's listen to this again I'm gonna turn down some of this as well That gave me that headroom. All right. So next, after I do that, um, I'm gonna go ahead and go in here and EQ. Um, instead of using this standard EQ, an EQ that I really like is gonna be one by waves. And so what I'm gonna do is we'll start EQing with the uh, loop first. So I'm gonna show you which pl plugin I like of the waves EQ. Just go into that. I have this gold bundle and just go over here where you see R E Q. Um, REQ2 is the one I like to use. This one right here it has a real um, good curve on it uh, as far as like, let me just wait for this thing to load. I'm not sure why it's taking so long to load, but there we go. And you can change the type here, but basically I'll come in here. We want to cut out some of those low frequencies. You can kind of see, you know, where you're at with that. Usually, um, you know, if I cut out, you know, anything kind of like below 125 I should be good and it's gonna make room for the low frequencies of like your kick and your 808 to pop through the mix so that's what we got going on there so I'm gonna do that on a couple of tracks and since this loop is kind of similar here it's just put up an octave or put up a couple of keys I'm gonna just keep that same curve right here so let's just go so take this and we're going to put this on like the snare you know what i'm saying and i'll put this on also like the hats and that should be good let's just go ahead and listen to that and i might make adjustments if i need to yeah. to go ahead and come on for some reason with this new macbook pro with the m1 chip sometimes it takes a little bit of time for these plug in to load and I'm, I think Apple needs to fix that but we'll keep it going Bet. So now that we have a pretty good, um, some good levels, and I also have some decent EQing, this making room for some of the lower frequencies to pop through the mix. Next thing I like to do is do a little bit of panning. So I'm going to pan some of these instruments to the left or the right, and it's going to give it slight stereo image. So let's do that. And this track is pretty simple, so it's not a whole lot I'm gonna need to be doing to this beat. Now, the next thing after I get the levels right, I EQ, pan it, stuff like that. Next thing I wanna do is just look and analyze on this track. Hey, is there anything that I can maybe put a compressor on to make it punch out in the mix better? Anything I can put like a reverb on to make you know the mix sound a little bit more fuller, wider, and all that sort of stuff and deeper. So what I'll do is I'll listen to it a little bit and just we're gonna first of all see if maybe I could throw something on these loops. So I'm gonna throw this RC20 on here. It has a retro color to it. Um, shout out to Bricks Domain. You know, he put me onto this plugin just in his class I took. 
and it's a pretty dope plugin. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw this sad piano on here and we'll go, go from there. Alright, cool. So we got a little some cool little stuff going on with this RC20 plugin. It just basically gives a vinyl effect to it. But now what I could do if I want to, I can come over here to either the melody or the drums and affect just the um this these little aux tracks here. So let's see if we want to do something like that just to make a little, you know, make it sound better. So one thing I can do with these drums is I can come over here and put this MV2 plugin on here. Let's just see how it sounded with the drums if I put that in there. Just kind of add a little bit of glue to this. As you can see, I put it on both the drums and the melody. I'm gonna turn the melody down just a little bit as well as the drums slightly. Let's check it out some more. Now what I can also do is on this melody, I can go over here and add a reverb right to it, or I could actually come over here to the sins and just add it, just, just a little touch of it. So let's actually go to the sins and I'm gonna take it and put bus three over there and reverb. And we're gonna just add a reverb to this. And I'm just gonna add just a little bit to that melody. Come on, put on there, get on there. A little bit to the melody, uh, might to a little bit decay, put a little high cut on there, turn the depth up just a little bit. I'm gonna leave the mix all the way up and then I'm gonna go ahead and start turning this up as I play the beat. And then something else I like to do is put like the uh, R bass on the 808. Sometimes, uh, you know, that can make the 808 stand out just a little bit more in the mix. Let me just go ahead and go down to R bass. And this is one of my favorite plugins. I learned about this plugin from Superstar O, real uh, goat in the industry, man. So this is a definite go-to that I love to do on my bass. So let me go ahead and also go ahead and click on that and we can just move this around some. I'm gonna come back over here to this one so I can get A and then we can go to B.
cool. We'll also go ahead and tear, um, we're gonna use the EQ on this 808, and I'm gonna just roll off some of the um, high filters or high, high frequencies on this one. So we'll just take this one, move this over, and I'm gonna change this type right here to that. Let me see here. Now, a lot of people might um, add a distortion to this. I'm gonna actually opt out of doing that on this particular beat. But what I'm gonna do is go ahead and we can try it and see if it might be good for that. But um, I'm gonna go ahead and just copy and paste these over here by holding down option and dragging it on over. And um, basically the reason why I'm doing that because this is the same 808. When I made that beat, this beat, I should have probably go ahead and cut, chop this up and put these uh, 808s on the same track, but I didn't. So anyway, let's go ahead and listen to this beat some more and see what we get, need to you know, do um, to it next. So sometimes if my, my kick sounds a little airy, I'll go ahead and also throw this R bass on there. You can play around with the frequencies there, but that's what I also like to do. So let's keep it going. So basically went here and I'm you can do this with a lot of different um, plugins but this murder melodies plugin you can spread the audio here and I usually like to take like maybe you know a clap or you know a snare or whatever say if I have two claps or two snares maybe take one of them and make them wide so let's just check that out So actually, I feel like this beat is pretty solid. Um, when I mix my music, one thing I learned over time was to keep things simple. Um, when I first started making beats, mixing was like a horrible, horrible thing that I hated to do because I really sucked at it at first, you know what I mean? And the reason why I sucked at it is because I was trying to do too much. I would go in and I would try to make sure I, I would go in and add a bunch of frequencies to the EQ, boost frequencies that I didn't need to boost. I would uh, put plugins on different tracks just cause, um, like maybe come over here to a kick and put a bunch of compressors and stuff like that on it. And what it would do is mess up the mix overall. So what I've come to find is, when it comes to mixing at least, it's better to just to you know get the right sounds and you can just you know keep the mix simple if you have some sounds that are pretty strong. 
And so that's what I look to do. So um, at this point, there's only a couple of things I need to do. One thing I need to do is go ahead and add my new tag to the beat. And so what I'll do is go over here and I'm gonna go to my software instrument and do that. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, add my beat tag here. Ikaya. Ikaya. Yeah. All right, cool. So this has a lot of reverb on it, um, which I think is a good touch. I'm just going to take it down just a little bit, though. That's probably good enough. I'm also gonna take this uh, tag and take it down some. Yeah. All right, back. So at this point, I feel like the mix is solid, but one thing I'm, I am gonna do is go ahead and listen to it with my headphones on. So you wanna also make sure that you're listening to your big, your mixes with different, you know, speakers, headphones, different things like that. So right now you can't see it, but I'm gonna put my headphones on. I'm gonna listen to the mix again, just with the headphones to make sure that there's not something I need to, you know, swap out, change up, you know, those type of things. So let me go ahead and do that and let's get it rolling. You got it. So one tip here that I want to give y'all is sometimes you don't want to put your 808 so high or so loud. Um, when you put your 808s loud, even though they're blare and you hit hard, sometimes it can overshadow everything else. All right. So now that I found that this is, sounds pretty solid, you know, I could use some other plugins to like A, B the mix as well. Like they have certain plugins like... Um, let me see here. This Rocket Power Sound has this car test stereo uh, plug-in, or not stereo, but plug-in. I'll go ahead and put that on here and we'll listen to it a little bit with that. Um, this is supposed to mimic or emulate you being in the car. So instead of having to bounce this down and go out to my car and listen to the beat there, I can throw this plug-in on here and that can pretty much help. Let's check it out. So uh, it's, it's a decent plugin. I mean, I wouldn't, you know, overly rely on it. You know, you can still go and listen to it on over uh, different, you know, speakers and stuff like that. But it is a good plug plugin to go ahead and throw on there as an AB. You can also, uh, with your headphones, if your headphones are on, there's another plugin. Or if you're mixing with your headphones as well, there's another plugin you can get. It's called NX Ocean Way Nashville. It's a plugin I'd like to use from time to time. And it's supposed to emulate you know you being in a real professional studio environment basically a, a studio environment in nashville say if you're in one of those top big boy studios out there as you can see it looks like you're in a big boy studio so um i'll go ahead and throw my headphones on again just to a b this mix one more time and then we'll go from there Alright, and you want to make sure you turn those plugins off 
after you uh, use them because on the stereo out lease because if you don't, it's gonna mess up your mix when you uh, try to you know export your files. So since these are audio files, one thing I also can do is come to the end of these. I can push my uh, push the letter T and then go to to Zoom or Fade Tool, and I can just come over here on each one of these and do a slight little fade. Just so, like, sometimes on, with audio, it might leave a little slight pop on your, uh, you know, a little pop on your stuff, man. So, I like to come over here and just do a slight little EQ. I mean, not EQ, but a fade on the end of these. All right. Um, so, not 100% necessary, but... Sometimes it is because there's been times where I would do this and it would like leave a slight little pop sound like after it comes off of it. So that's why I recommend doing that. Um, let me see here. I'm going to scroll over here to this one too. And I like to come up with like a process, you know what I'm saying, of mixing. That way, this is something I'm going to be doing on every beat. You know what I mean? Uh, so after I do this, I'm going to go ahead I make sure I have enough uh, headroom here to master the beat. Again, you know, you want it to be negative 6 dB or, you know, negative 3 or whatever. No more than that. So anyway, I have my tag here. I have everything. I'm going to go ahead and push Command B. And what I'm going to do is select the PCM option. We got Wave 24-bit. Uh, 4800 on that and the reason why I want to do it like this I want to um, get the better sample rate because I'm still going to be processing the audio um, so I'm gonna push OK and I'm gonna put this in you know a folder okay so I have my new beats folder I'm gonna go ahead and create a new folder and say slow down and the BPM is 123 and then what I'll do here for this, yeah, I'm. This is just something I do. Um, I put record because this is going to be the version that I'm going to upload for artists to rap over. That the one that has the headroom on it, okay. Uh, that way, when they bring it into their studio session, you know, whoever's mixing their beat, uh, the beat with their vocals, will have enough headroom to bring the levels back up. So I just push record, I just type record right here, and that's gonna let myself know that this is the version that they will rap on, and also the artist will know this too. So I'm gonna push bounce, and it's gonna come through here and bounce this whole thing down. Now I always keep my tag, um, at least one audio tag in the beginning of my beats. The reason why I'm doing that is, you know, self-explanatory so we'll let this do this and then we're almost about to wrap this video up here in a second all right so i'm going to come over here now uh i'll create a excuse me i'm gonna create a new track i mean a new session and i'm not going to close this because i'm gonna come back to it for um the stems okay but i'm going to create a new session Let's do audio and then I'm going to come over here to this guy and then I'm going to come and find my uh, wave file. So I'm going to drag this over here to the very beginning like so. It's going to say change project, you know. You die.
Sky. All right, cool. So basically, I'm going to take this and I'm going to be taking this and moving this throughout the beat. Um, see how it's coming like right before uh, measure 17. I have one measure before that. I can just now take this and hold down option and begin to drag this over maybe 16 bars over each time. So just highlight it like that. Keep on dragging it over by holding down option. And we can even put it one at the end here. So I'm just going to take this. I'm just going to drag it on over here to the very end. You got it. And now we have the beat completely tagged. All right, so I'm gonna take this and um, we can mute this, okay? And that can we can basically mute this for the regular version or with the uh, tag version, we can unmute it. So it's that simple. Um, you basically wanna come over here and we're gonna put this uh, mastering plugin on here. Uh, go to Ozone um, and we're gonna put this Ozone 9 on here. All right, now usually what I do is I just use, use the mastering assistant. I'll put a loop on the part that has the most of the beats here, uh, most of the instruments. And I'm not gonna claim that I'm a mastering uh, engineer, so that's why I always just go ahead and use this mastering assistant instead of trying to put all the different plugins on here to master the beat. And this keeps it simple. So we we'll click on that. And once you do, you're gonna see that we have modern and we have some other options here. I usually keep it at medium and uh, um, I'll do low, like say if uh, the headroom is a little bit higher than the negative 6 dB, and then I'll just go ahead and push next and keep it on streaming, because push next and let it play the beat. Actually open that plugin back up if you want to you can make adjustments to this so like you can go from say like the RC uh, one to this other one right here change the transient different things like that you know yeah. you can change it back it doesn't really matter yeah. so we're gonna just see the difference between the two turn it off and on again so let's see So after everything is done here, um, I'm just going to basically make sure I have this end marker pulled all the way to the very end of this. Just making sure, just so, you know, saying sometimes it might mess you up. Turn this off right here. And um, we want to go ahead and export or bounce this basically um, the MP3. We're going to do it at 320k BPS. And... Um, I usually leave it joint stereo and I turn this normalize off and we're gonna go ahead and push uh, okay. I'll rename it and I usually like to go ahead and name it and then put tagged afterwards. And what that's gonna do is just let me know this is a tagged version of the beat. So we'll just go ahead and export this uh, or excuse me, bounce this down as an, uh, an MP3. All right. Now, after I do that, the next thing I'm gonna do is turn this off so I'll just go ahead and mute this out here and I'll push command B again. And what we're going to do now is we're going to export or bounce down um, both the, the, uh, the wave and the MP3. So we're going to do 24 bit, but we can do the 16 bit and 4100. And then we also do the MP3 at the 320 KBS. OK, and so what I'll do here is go ahead and click OK. And instead of naming it tagged or anything like that, I'm just going to put the BPM after that. And that user is going to identify that these is going to be the versions that don't have the tags. Okay. And so I'm just go ahead and put that on there. And then from there, I'm going to push bounce, let it do its thing. All right. 
So now this is gonna bounce down the MP3 version and the wave version of the beat. And I'm gonna let it do its thing just like so. And then we can start checking this thing and see what we got going here. So I have a new session over here. I can just minimalize this. Uh, let's go ahead and click off that. And um, now what I wanna do is actually focus on getting the stems ready okay so we already have the stems here but some of the beat um, some of the different instruments might um, you know mess up so I'll do a save as and then just do a new session okay just to get this ready for those stems and everything like that so um, yeah we want to go ahead and keep a loop here and just want to make sure each sound is not peaking in the mix And it's gonna make sure that certain things aren't, you know, clipping or going too crazy on the on the mix. So what I'll do is I'm just gonna actually do a, a command shift S, doing a save as, and I'm just gonna go a uh, different session here, say mix two. So I have my original mix, and then I have this second mix right here that I have. All right, and after I do that, I'm gonna let it go ahead and save and do its thing. I'm gonna take, uh, you know, some of the stuff is not necessarily like, you know, these um, auxiliary tracks. I can take those up out of here. It's not really necessary to get the stems, if, if you will. Okay, so the stems, I don't know why this thing wants to act slow, bro. This kind of pisses me off. Cause this is a brand new computer, y'all. Like. Brand new computer has the M1 chip and it's like acting super slow. And you can see here, I don't have a whole lot of other plugins or anything or programs up and running. So I'm not sure why it's taking so long on that, messing this up. But anyway, we're good on that. So then what I'll do is you want to identify like what uh, plugins you want to keep on here. So certain plugins that actually affect the way the beat sounds, you want to keep that on there. Certain plugins that maybe doesn't, you want to take it off. For the most part, I'm going to leave everything on here. So what I'll do now is I'm going to highlight here and I'm going to push option on the faders. And it's going to bring everything up to a nominal gain. And I'm also going to push option. I hold down option to click on the uh, the pan, the pans, okay, panning me. Uh, and from here, I'll just solo out certain things like the 808. I want to solo that out. And I want to make sure I'm looking over here at this stereo out, making sure it's not going too crazy. Um... Okay, my bad. Um, you want to make sure that you come to your output and take this back to stereo out. That's why we couldn't hear it. So go ahead and do that. And see, you can even take turn turn the uh, the R base off of this 808 if you want to. And then that, that will basically leave it up to whoever is gonna be mixing the music for this artist. That will give, leave, leave it up to them to do that. But that's fine on this one. You don't have to. We don't have to like turn the gain down or anything on that track. Same there is it's solid. Let's listen to the kick here. See if we need to do anything different. So it kind of peaked out a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is come over here to the gain and just turn it down just slightly. And because you can know the the um, mixing engineer can always boost that signal for us. So that's that's straight. Let's do the uh, snare. All right. So it's a little bit too uh, hot. Turn the gain down. Usually anywhere like under the negative three or really under the negative six, you're gonna be good. Yeah. 
All right, bet. So now that I did a little bit of gain staging on these, I can go ahead and export this as, uh, you know, export this again, even though I have these files. And this is going to be a cleaner uh, deal here. And basically what I did is put shift command in the letter E. All right, I'm going to come over here to my folder. I'm going to create one more new folder. And I'm going to just name it the name of the beat. Say stems. I'm going to go ahead and keep it 24 bit wave file. Um, I'm going to, you know, not going to select any of these. I'm going to turn normal, uh, normalize off. And if you look over here at pattern, you see where it says custom. You always want to have custom first and then track name after it. So I'll come back over here and say slow down. And then this is going to help with file organization. So like basically if, uh, you know, for some reason your computer crashes and somehow all the files get like scrambled up for whatever reason, you can now go and type in slow down, which is the name of this beat when you search and it should pull up all of your different, you know, audio files compared to if you had a bunch of different 808, you know, kick, da 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 da. I always name my beats like this so that, or my, you know, the, the, the stems like this. So, you know, kind of helps with file organization anyway. We're gonna go over here, let's export. And it's gonna do its thing. And what you can also do here is after you export uh, all the files again, you know what I mean? You can drag these back into a new session just to make sure that the beat's not coming in too, too hot. So I can come over here and Basically, we're gonna just bring these stems back in just to make sure that everything is good. Um, we're gonna make sure that everything's gonna play right. So I'll just give it some time to bring here, go ahead and uh, come back in here. But if you look at the, the actual wave files, you know, nothing looks like it's really peaking on here. So what we could do is we go ahead and uh, move the, uh, get the BPM back over here. And then we're just gonna start auditioning some of these tracks. So uh, making sure that everything sounds right. So anyway, y'all, that's today's video. Um, I was trying to be as thorough as, uh, as possible, I'm not really leaving out too much of the process that I personally use to mix my beats, uh, a process that, you know what I'm saying, I, over time, found that works for me. You know, there are several other different ways to mix beats, and you can definitely try those out, but if you liked how my beat was sounding in this mix, you might wanna try out my process as well. Um, you know, I'm a student of the game. I pay attention to a lot of different people's processes and I try to do my best to take maybe what they're doing and apply it to what I'm doing and, you know, make it my way. You feel me? Um, so, and, and I'm recommending you all do the same. Now, without further ado, I'm going to end the video very soon, but I do want to preference that if you need more help, you can go to my site. I have a mixing course that's on there. And it's actually hours of content to it. I actually take a little bit more time to, to explain certain things and it's broken down um, in different videos. So, you know, you can get one concept at a time in the course. Now, we also have loop packs and I also have a one-on-one -on -one service. The one-on-one -on -one service is a, a Zoom call. Um, this is where we can see each other's screen. I can control your screen. You can control mine. I can listen to your beats and give you some pointers of what you could probably do to take it to the next level, vice versa. 
And those Zoom calls are specifically based for questions on how to make beats in Logic Pro 10. So if you're a beginner, intermediate level producer, or you're just new to making beats in Logic Pro 10, might be a great option for you. Otherwise, thank you for subscribing to the channel. Make sure you give me a thumbs up on the video if you felt like it was a good video. And I'll see you in the next videos to come. All right, peace.